What's the difference between these three? Less than you think. Despite a hundred years of development, your bike has the same basic frame and the same inherent instability of two wheels as a push bike, and a steering system as rudimentary as the trolley. The big difference is that the motorcycle has a power-to-weight ratio that far exceeds supercar acceleration. Motorcycle engineers are designing bikes to make them faster, but they're often more difficult to ride. Are you keeping pace with technology? To handle your bike with confidence, it pays to understand and to harness the science behind how it behaves. What a racing bike and a road bike allow you to do are quite distinct. Some things don't work on the road, but some skills are transferable. Let the experts explain. Why couldn't I take this bike out on the road then and ride it probably as effectively as the, the road machine? You know, I could probably have a list as long as, you know, as my Christmas list to talk about the difference between that bike and this bike. First of all, obviously, you've got the indicators and the wing mirrors, which you haven't got on that. You've got race fairings on that. The handling, it's, um, with that, we've got a restricted amount of steering which is ideal for the racetrack, but obviously when you come to, come to your local town where there's a roundabout, you're not going to get around it. One big difference between a race and a road machine is the tyres. Tommy uses slicks, untreaded tyres of sticky rubber designed to last just one race. Their grip is phenomenal, not so on the road. That's because slicks need to stay extremely hot. The slicks need to be probably heated up to about 90 degrees before they actually get some grip oh, into right, so it. They wouldn't give me more grip than no, my road tyres are. No, because they need to be heated up to a certain amount and uh, before you go out onto circuit, you know, we have um, proper temperature gauged a, uh, you know, tyre warmers. Yeah, is that the tyre warmers I saw earlier? Even the best road rider can't work them hard enough to keep them hot. Grip levels plummet until the tyres are so cold he's being overtaken by milk floats. Ordinary road tyres, however, get hot under normal use to grip better than tyres designed for racing or track days. What about the brakes then? The brakes relatively the same. Now, this is, we, we run a full um, you know, Brembo brake system with performance friction pads and uh, it's just a huge amount of different stopping power, mm. which, which may help on the road, but obviously you've not got as grippy tyres mm. as we have on the race bikes. Watch Tommy brake. The bike front dips suddenly as weight transfers to the front tyre. But he's not slamming on the brakes. That wouldn't transfer weight and the front tyre would skid away. Instead, he brakes firmly to get weight onto the front, then squeezes much harder. Practice on a clear stretch of road so you can brake safely in an emergency. Weight transfer also works the other way. Tommy winds on the power gently at the corner apex to move weight onto the rear tyre, then opens up hard as grip increases. That's what causes a lot of the problems on the road. So people going heavy on the road, yeah. trying to make the bike do two things, they're trying to make yeah. it break, and then they're trying to make it lean over as well. Going back to the suspension, you know, that's built to race with the suspension, it's a lot harder. With this, it's a lot more plusher. And probably if I sit on it, it's going to um, feel completely different than my race price. Yeah. Yeah, you know, probably I could, I could go to sleep on this. It just feels so much more comfortable. And uh, the first thing that you notice is you actually sit in this. With a race bike, you actually sit on top of it. And that's probably, again, to do with the weight transfer. Racers move around the bike to improve control. And so can you. Riding in a straight line, Tommy's racing crouch both reduces aerodynamic drag and maintains position to change direction fast at the end of the straight. His forearms are almost parallel to the ground in order to push and pull the weight hanging on the inside of the bike in a corner. Each person has, person's got their individual style, individual riding preferences, the way they feel, you know, and uh, maybe the first a few little adjustments here and there, but as soon as you start to uh, try and do, you know, real technical adjustments to the bike, you've got to really know what you're doing and get the right person to do the job. The less um, smoother you are with body transfer, the more you're going to, you know, the more, the more you're going to upset the bike. So really, that'd be the difference between track riding and road riding, wouldn't it? Where well, you're on the edge so. and you're pushing yourself, yeah. and you're on the edge of where yeah, you, you, what you, you and the bike could do. Yeah, at the end of the day, you know, you can't really be expected to do that on the road, you know, and uh, that's the idea of having a road bike because it's a lot more comfortable ride. That's why they've got the softer seats on the softer suspension. It makes it such more of a plusher ride and uh, makes the the rider on the road a lot more comfortable. I, think, uh, I feel it allows for variables as well. A car could pull out. You've got lampposts. You've got drains. You've got yeah, man out covers and it goes on and on and on really so uh, yeah it's good to get a lot of people to look at your bike maybe who, who have a fair clue about suspension yeah. but um, 
mainly about being safe, really, being safe and smooth. Making both road bikes and race bikes right for the different demands made on them is an exact science. Some things don't work on the road. To get the edge using your own bike's capabilities, it pays to get expert advanced tuition. So, follow the links under Skills Enhancement for some advanced tuition.